So, what if I wanted to solve a um, first order differential equation like that um, and I can't do it analytically? Um, let's have a look at um, an approximate method, and this is the method that Euler came up with. So, what he said was, well, I've got initial conditions and I know something about my differential. Here's the formula for my differential, my gradient, but of course, I could think of it as that that gradient is just my little triangle. So if I started at y0 and went up to y1, that would be my height, wouldn't it? And I'm going to call h, that's going to be my little difference in x, that's my base. Yeah? I could do that and connect the two. Um, so if I knew what y0 was and I pick a small h, because I'm going in small increments, I could find out what y is, couldn't I? If you think about it, all we're doing is a sort of tailor. Um, series, but we're just doing a linear approximation by just doing the first two terms. So let's have a look at the simplest version of this formula I would use is this one here. So if I start at my point um, x0, y0, there we go, so I'm at height y0, and I decide to move across to the right a distance. I'm going to h, which I'm going to say, let's say 0 0.1. It's a small value. Then I could predict where this point is by just using the tangent to whatever my curve is, couldn't I? Um, I just need to know where I start from, what my gradient is. There's my gradient, and how far I'm travelling. Yeah. So my new y value is going to be my start point. That's the gradient at this point here, at my start point, times h the distance, yeah? And where am I going to get this from? Well, I've got a first order differential equation that's going to find that for me. And of course, I could carry on and repeatedly do this um, as long as each time I can find my new differential, my gradient here. I could just repeat this process over and over again, couldn't I? Um, until everything worked. There we go. That's what I'd like to do. Oops, I really want to rub that out. Okay, so let me give you an example. Here, I have a function here. Here's my function, my differential equation. Yeah, so I can work out at any point what dy by dx is if I know what the y and x, x and y values are, can't I? Okay, and they're telling me that I'm going to start at the point 1, 1. So this point down here is going to be 1, 1. And I'm going to use an increment of a 0 0.1 to start off with. And here's my iterative formula. So what do I have to do? Well, my first step is I'm starting at 1, 1. And I want to find the gradient at 1, 1. We always call the first point P0, yeah? Um, that's why you see zeros here. So I've got a formula for it. All I need to do is just put the values in. So 1 squared for that, 1 cubed for that, add that together, get 2. So I know my gradient at this point is 2. And using my, oh, my Euler formula here, if I know that the gradient is 2, I started at y equals 1. Um, my gradient is 2, and I'm going a distance of 0 0.1 to the right. So my y value is 1.2. So I've moved from my initial point P0 to my point P1, which I've worked out to be 1.1, uh, 1.2. So I've moved from this point here to there. Just a little approximation move. OK, what if I want to find uh, the next point? Well, what I do is I do the same thing. I want to find my P2 point. I'm starting at 1.1, 1.2. Um, so I can use my differential equation and substitute in these values here. And that will give me my gradient, won't it? 1.1 squared plus 1.2 squared cubed, sorry, gives me a gradient at that point of 2.98, yeah? 2.98, I then use my Euler equation here um, for my little linearization. So y2 is going to be y1, which is 1.1. Plus 2.9x, the gradient, times 0 0.1, my little uh, horizontal delta x. That gives me um, y is uh, that. And if I've got my third point, so I've now moved from 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, that point there, P1, I've moved to P2 using this, using that gradient. And of course, I can do the same thing again if I want to get to P3. 
then get my uh, diff equation, find my gradient at P2, which is going to be 4.7. I substitute that into my Euler linearization, um, and along with the Y2 gradient at 2, distance I'm moving. So my new Y value, Y3, is 1.97. So I've now moved to 1.3, 1.97, that's P3. And if I want to do it again, I just go through the same process, use my diff equation, sub in the values, get my new gradient. At, that's the gradient at P3 is 9.3. Substitute that into my Euler linearization, and uh, there we go. Um, P3, the Y3 was that, 1.917. My new gradient, 9.3 times 0 0.1, gives me 2.906. So I've now got P4, and P4 is 1.4, 2.906. So let's have a look at what that means graphically. Here are all those values, and I've put these into a graph here. So I started here at the bottom. That's our start point, P0, which is 1, 1. Um, I moved to the iterate the iterative process approximated a P, P it's going to be P1 that's P2 and you can see it's moving along can you P4 now this line here is the my computer's prediction of what um, that the solution to the differential equation is that goes through this start point and what it's doing is it's doing this calculation using lots of very small increments so we were using an increment of 0 0.1 each time going across um, but the other thing that's interesting is can you see all of these points are a bit on the low side of my green line aren't they the y values are too low and they're on the wrong side and that's all because of this fact we're always using the gradient from the point before so they're always sort of undershooting aren't they all the way through so that's what we're going to watch out for is accuracy so how could I improve the accuracy of this well what I could do is I could reduce um, I could reduce the value of H so if I halve that from 0 0.1 to 0 0.05 I get points you can see here these are my new points they're the values and there they are graphed um, and you can see they're much closer to the line they're still on the low side aren't they they're still on that side all the way along but they're more accurate. So if I want to get a more accurate answer, um, I reduce the value of my H and have smaller increments. Makes sense, doesn't it? That's what computers do as well. They're just doing lots of small increments. So here's my summary. If I want to solve a first order differential equation, which therefore can be arranged, so I can have dy by dx on one side and some functions of x and y on the other side, and I know a start point for it, I can use this Euler method. I can use my differential equation to find my gradient. I can substitute that into my Euler equation, my linearization, and I can find point after point. I can just do this iteratively um, and carry on doing that and get a load of solutions. And if I want to improve the accuracy, make the little h, the h smaller. There you have it.